Andrea, Leanne, you've both had a career of making all sorts of great contributions to women in tech. And Leanne, I want to start with you. Your journey as an entrepreneur, as a female founder, led you to start She Loves Tech. How did that happen? Well, before She Loves Tech, I had been a founder three times. And I've you know, been doing this for more than 10 years. And so early on in the days, I remember being the only woman in the room full of men, right? And it was a really lonely journey. I didn't have other women who look like me, right? Or who had the same background as I did, which is the reason why we started She Loves Tech, to really give that community to women entrepreneurs out there. And Andrea, you've had many different roles in your career and many different contributions to women in tech. What is the thing that shines out the most for you as your biggest contribution? I've been really fortunate throughout my career to work for many incredible leaders who've become mentors, coaches, and really guides for me. And I have to say, much like Leanne, there were many times that I found myself being the only female in the room. And I remember as a young Andrea at high school and even in university, I tended to gravitate towards math, science, you know, physics, chem, and then I studied engineering at university. And there just weren't many role models back then. Look, fast forward today, certainly the landscape looks a little bit different, but the reality is we have so much more to do. So that's one of the reasons why, because of my own experience, that I'm so passionate about encouraging young females into STEM subjects, young females into the tech industry. And just from my own perspective as an investor, female-led businesses are outperforming male-led businesses in a lot of circumstances, and by a wide margin in many cases. But there still is this reality of a shortfall of funding for female-led businesses, female founders. What can we do to change that, Leanne? I think this is where companies like She Loves Tech and Microsoft come in. Uh, at She Loves Tech, you know, people think that we are just a community, and we are, right, to bring entrepreneurs together so that they can journey together, but we're so much more than that. We give them the tools and resources, we give them a platform to be visible, and then we connect them to VCs who then can fund them. And now we're also building our own fund to be able to help to really fund them out of our own pocket as well. We're incredibly excited about this partnership. We really believe that industry collaboration, frankly, is required to drive an accessible and inclusive economic growth here in this region. And we also believe very strongly that women-led organizations are critical to really spur the growth right here in Asia. And as a result of the partnership with She Loves Tech, we have this incredible community of women entrepreneurs who also have access to the Microsoft for Startups Founders Hub, which is designed to give access to technology, it's designed to connect with industry leaders for mentoring, also skilling and learning, as well as the broader Microsoft ecosystem. Microsoft has an amazing enablement program as well as across Asia that falls under your responsibility, Andrea. How is that helping people? There are more than a billion people in the world today with some form of a disability. We really believe that to help bridge this divide, more people need access to accessible technology. And this is one of the reasons why we were so humbled to launch the Microsoft Asia Pacific Enabler Program. And it's really focused on helping people develop the skills and the learning that they need as well as to find employment. We also see our startups building more accessible technology as well. So last year, we saw a 65% increase in the number of startups that were building accessible and assistive technology. Diversity of thought, diversity and inclusion are still big challenges, and their challenges are different across different cultures around the world. And this is still a big challenge, and there's inertia to crossing into having inclusiveness everywhere in organizations. Leanne, what do you think all companies can do to cross into better inclusion? What doesn't work is seeing diversity and inclusion as checkboxes. So if you don't really integrate this into your strategy, it's not going to work. If you're just doing a talk here and there during lunchtime, that's not going to work. You really need to incorporate this into your whole integrate strategy. All levels of the organization. All across all the organization. Um, so if you have a higher a chief diversity officer and you put the sole responsibility of diversity and inclusion on this one person, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen.
everybody in the organization, no matter what level you are, needs to be a diversity and inclusion officer to some extent. When you think about Asia Pacific, we have so many different vibrant and dynamic cultures. So for many organizations, it's a matter of making it real by bringing people along the journey such that it's not just tone that's Showing set from the, the top with leaders, absolutely. Right. And the reality is it's everybody's responsibility. I believe that allyship really needs to be an act. I, I think when we see, looking at other organizations, we see a lot of allyship again being something that's very surface level. Yeah, people are paying lip service to it, but there really isn't the underlying intent to drive it through the organization. There's a lot of talk, and it also needs to be an act of bravery and courage, going outside of that comfort zone, really pushing boundaries, putting your hand up to say, you know what, we need to do things differently. That is what allyship needs to be. Mm -hmm.